real popular one. And now we have Amplamorlin and CJ1295. Um, Is that right? Right. Um, yeah, with, with those, uh, what do we see? And what's the, is there there's some type of difference between one's a one's a pep one is a peptide releasing hormone or one's an analog one's a hormone releasing? Is there there's a difference between these? Yeah, yeah. Technically, it all comes down to the receptor which they're hitting on the pituitary to stimulate growth hormone release. Okay. Um, and there's two 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 of those receptors. Um, you know, one is accepting uh, usually natural signal from your hypothalamus, so your brain is telling it when to secrete growth hormone. The other one is re- receiving uh, input from ghrelin, or you know, the as some people call it, the hunger hormone. Mm-hmm. Um, and together, those have an interplay to uh, to both release uh, growth hormone and reduce the blocking and the inhibition of release of, of growth hormone. Um, and so together, you get um, you get sort of a synergistic effect of growth hormone release. That's why almost uh, we all everyone will recommend them at the same time. They're definitely synergistic, and you want to be hitting both of those receptors uh, to get the maximum uh, clinical benefit. Okay, and that was specifically amplamorlin and CJ1295. Correct, yeah. And it's the, the, the types of, I guess, products generally that most people will so associate with growth hormone releasing hormone or are going to be uh, the samorlin, the CJC, and the tesamorlin. Those okay. tend to be the three most commonly on that receptor, whereas uh, the other class is going to be involving the GHRP2, the GHRP6, the hexarelin. Um, and then the, the ipamorlin and MK677. So it has a, a few more receptors on, or should say four, a few more uh, different drug options on that. Um, but, uh, but those are the, sort of the two classes. Okay. And what are you seeing as far as popularity? And then are there any side effects with them? I've heard some stuff about prolactin and cortisol with some of the growth hormone releasing uh, peptides. Definitely, yeah. I like to, the, the growth hormone releasing uh, peptides uh, two and six uh, were not you know, we were actually discovered even before they discovered what the natural ligand was. Before they even knew what ghrelin was stimulating, they knew that they had already uh, sort of found that GHRP6 was working. So the GHRP6, this first generation, has the most side effects. Uh, the one that is probably the most uh, most talked about is its effect on hunger with a, a, a great increase in, in, in hunger, almost voracious eating. GHRP2 is a little bit more corrected, but the ipamorlin is one we use by far the most common from that category because it's so selective uh, against side effects. It doesn't raise hunger, it doesn't raise prolactin, it doesn't raise cortisol, it doesn't raise acetylcholine levels. Um, also, it, 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 it's even got a, a clinical, tr- or I should say, a, a paper um, that labels it as the first selective growth hormone uh, secreted gog. Um, and so we're, we're really high on that one and use that with, uh, I'd say, a high regularity. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna start. We're just starting to play with that as well at the clinic. And so, why do people use these the growth hormone analogs? Are you talking about performance? Do they help with anything in particular as far as joint health? Uh, yeah, definitely. Hair, and hair growth, growth, I've heard. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I would say you know uh, it generally has all the benefits of growth hormone, which I would say traditionally tend to be you know better body comp. Uh, better metabolic profile, lipid profile. So, you know, things like reducing your carotid intramural media thickness, mm. uh, reducing your triglycerides, um, you know, improving your insulin sensitivity. And that one can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, but the other things are, you know, better energy, better sleep. Um, and, you know, just the all of the things that sort of were popularized with growth hormone you get with the growth hormone secretagogues, but sort of in a safer way, a less expensive way. Um, and you get uh, additionally some other types of protection. So it, it is sort of a win-win from the transition from exogenous growth hormone to sort of getting your body's natural functioning back to, to where it's optimal. Yeah, and so for who people don't know too, this is actual growth hormone you are unable to give to patients unless they are on, they like they have um, dwarfism or some form of actual low growth hormone. And with growth hormone too, there are actual side effects. So this is kind of a great way to get around that and why I was curious too, if you could mix these growth hormone analogs like you were talking about earlier with other peptides, um, like a popular one right now is also the BPC-157. Um, 